Hello. Happy Thursday. How are you guys and gals? <laughs> All right. Um, I think the lighting will be marginally better over here for this dark fabric. It's really not that dark. It's, I mean, it's dark, but it's this really great wine color. You can probably see it better up here. It looks kind of uh, reddish up there, but um, one big, oh, I, kind of a mistake I made yesterday was I forgot to draft the fly onto the shorts. Um, and it's technically fine because there's lots of ways to sew a zipper fly, but if you have not cut out your, um, whatever you're drafting to make into a zipper fly, you need to take this little piece here, this one here, basically, you only cut one of these out of interfacing. If you haven't cut out your shorts, if you have and you already have, you've already cut your um, center front, it's okay. I'm gonna sew it that way. But you just need to do this to your pattern. Just take that piece and attach it like that before you cut it out. <laughs> I can't believe um, I have an echo, really. Refresh, Ray. How's it going, Ray? Um, I don't know why I would have an echo. Make sure that cord's not touching. Does that help? Let me know. Maybe I can turn this one off here. I don't really know. I've never been told to have an echo. Um, so yeah, so your pattern pieces should look like this as one, right? And then you're gonna put a notch right here on the seam line. So whatever seam allowance you chose here, mine's five eighths, you're gonna put a little notch right there. Okay. But if you've already cut out your pieces and like me, you were playing some really serious fabric chicken, um, we're going to sew it with the, um, pieces that I cut out yesterday with one change. Use this piece, but before, when you cut it out, like you're going to probably have to recut this piece out. You can try it at this width, but it, I try, I sewed one. It's a little narrow, mainly because of the zipper I use. Just add your seam allowance to this piece right here. Whatever seam allowance you're putting on your pattern, add it to this. So to reiterate, no echo, okay, great. Thanks, H dot. Um, if you have not cut out your fabric for this and you're wanting to do the zipper fly, just take this little piece I told you the dimensions of in the cutting stream and attach it to your front, just like this. Just butt it up against it, just like that. And then put a notch here on your seam line. That's it. And you can put a dot here on your seam line here, but I'm going to walk you through that. Oh, okay. No worries. No worries. Yeah. Well, that's still good to hear, Ray, though. Someone else might not say something if they were hearing it, too. I, I am like a chronic bangs cutter, and I'm terrible at it, and they look so squirrely, and now I have hair on my nose. <laughs> at least I don't do it on camera anymore. Um, okay, and so now if you have cut out all your pieces like I have, and then you went to watch your super helpful how to sew a zipper fly video that you created that's helped so many people and you went, oh, <laughs> I forgot something. <laughs> so um, if you're in that boat like I am, so what you're gonna need to do is recut these two pieces and just add your seam allowance right here. Just add parallel line, that's it. So that's what I did. So here's mine, they're a little wider now. I did try and sew a sample with this width and if you use a little narrow seam allowance, it's fine. And if your zipper wasn't as wide as mine, because I used a zipper that um, wasn't even a brass zipper. I used this really wide one here. So it still works, but we're going to have a seam right here. And I'm really sorry about that. I make mistakes. It's a little wiggly. I know. I was really trying to hurry, just trying to make sure it'll work. <laughs> I um, know that a lot of jeans are actually sewn with a seam there, but... Um, I'm pretty sure the seam is only on the side that you do the curve on. So, all right. Well, there's my disclaimer, my admittance of guilt. I've pre-surged all my pieces. You can see barely that I have. I have autofocus off, um, but I have pre-surged all my pieces. Do you want me to guide, do you want me to turn the brightness up anymore? So let me move my pattern pieces here too. I thought I had my uh, paper piece there. Maybe it fell. Um, oh, 
I also forgot to cut the facing to the pocket, that little piece that I had set aside there. So maybe I'll just use some binding or something because um, I still don't have it cut out. Or maybe, let me see if I can find a scrap big enough to cut it out with. And we'll just cut it out. I was concerned about other stuff, admittedly. Let's see here, it's taped to the front. This piece right here. There. Yeah, I can get that. I even uh, showed you guys that, that little pattern piece and I still forgot to cut it out. Here's my luxurious amount of fabric. Let's see here. I just need this little pocket facing here. Two of these. And we'll be good to go. I don't have a, um, a weight here. Well, I kind of do, but I won't reach there. So we'll just do our best. I could pin it, huh? Yeah, exactly. The fly construction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've actually really enjoyed sewing um, the different jeans we've made, like the ash and... Was it the dawn? Wait, I didn't sew the dawn. What was the button fly that I sewed? The button fly jeans? That one was really different. That's not, not a zipper, obviously. But still really fascinating. It was the closet case. It's a closet case pattern because the fly was really similar to the zipper. Um, we've done the ash and we did one other one that had a zipper fly. Oh, the saffron. And they were all different. Oh, and the Jutland. I honestly wasn't a fan of how the Jutland fly sewed together. That felt very clunky. Um, but I know that that method really speaks to a lot of people because it's very literal. You literally place the pieces, how they're going to end up, and then stitch it. And I know that sounds kind of weird to describe it that way, but it's, it's like kind of different than sewing something from the inside out, you know? All right, here we go. I'll have to move that in a bit. Okay, so this piece, it didn't get surged then either. So let me um, surge that. I did surge one of my pocket openings by accident. You probably can't even see it. Goes like this. Let's see, how's it go like this? And I'll probably have to cut some off the top because we uh, are doing the waistband. Can you guys even see that? So here's my p pattern piece. I'm just laying it on there to see. There we go. That's how I fix that. All right, let me just search this edge real quick. This one um, and this one. Okay. Basically, I'm just surging the edge that gets top get, gets a uh, top stitch down. The Jutland, yeah, yeah. The Jutland was the men's jeans by uh, Thread Theory. I just remember. I had never sewn it that way, uh, so I didn't practice it. So maybe it just felt odd to me doing it live on camera for the first time. You know, that adds a layer. <laughs> but um, yeah, it just felt a little bit, it just felt really literal. It, did, it turned out nice. It, um, it turned out really nice. But I think the, I like the way the ash jeans look the best. But the way that the, the, this one that I'm going to do today, the one I based on the ginger jeans, that one makes the most sense to me. And I've, I used to sew them completely differently a long time ago. And I don't even remember how that was. 
I had, I still have the pattern pieces and everything. All right, so I'm gonna sew my facing first. And I kind of want my, um, the right side of my, uh, the right side. Did I just do this wrong? Wait a minute. Oh, I did do this wrong. Holy. Jeez Louise. Holy moly. I just did the, the opening edge. Oh my God. It's gonna be one of those days, you guys. Get your popcorn out. when things don't come together, don't you? <laughs> I can't believe I didn't realize the fly thing until this morning when I was watching that video and I was like, oh, <laughs> right, <laughs> I need a fly. I remember even saying when I was drafting that, and this is all you do. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, you can, like, I'm gonna sew it that way, but still, all right, here we go. I literally lined that up to that and then still sewed it wrong. All right, so I think this is a 3 8 inch seam. I'm just going to do mine. I'm going to do mine so that includes the seam, the surging. And then I'm also going to make sure that I keep my left and the right. I must be doing it for you. I know. <laughs> it's just you and me, Ray. This one, unfortunately, I actually surged the opening thinking it was the uh, side seam. So I gotta be doubly make sure I got that in there. This is so narrow. This is so narrow. What the heck? I may be sewing this wrong. I'm gonna make it work, but. So I do like it when pockets are stitched down uh, to the item you're sewing because, or the item that you're wearing because then they don't flap around, you know? <clears throat> and I like that when pockets stay, um, you know, towards the front of your garment. <laughs> what do you want to know, Ray? Okay, so there we have one nice clean finished pocket opening. I understitched it, but you can edge stitch it too. Instead of understitching, you could edge stitch and um, that would give it a little more of a constructed look, you know, a sturdier look. And in this canvas, that would actually re be really appropriate. I'm just really glad I found enough spools of thread that are matching so that my bobbin isn't different than my top and then I have to sew everything from the top. <laughs> you guys ever do that? <laughs> All right, where's my pocket? I'm gonna delay the, the, the a zipper fly as long as possible. Ray! <laughs> Thanks, Ray. That's so nice of you. Look at that, it's so big. I love it. Look at your cute little face. I don't ever see your guys' faces anymore. I don't see the icons. Why is that? That's so cute. <laughs> oh, you are too much. All right. Um, I think that I decided I wanted like this, right? I don't know. It goes like this. Yeah. Okay. Like that. I like the right side of my surging to show. So there's a right side in my opinion, and a wrong side. I know the autofocus is off, but um, I like this side better. So I'm just gonna line this up, and this time I'm gonna keep the angle. Usually I like to soften it and I make a, a curve right here. And if you're wanting to do that, you can surge it right off or, um, you know, just cut it. And if you're doing that and you don't have a serger and you're understitching it, 
Um, what you could do is put a little stay stitch on this edge, even pull one of the bobbin or the top a little bit, and it'll want to turn under. It'll be a lot easier to turn under and top stitch and clean finish it like this, rather than just leaving it flat. Like I'm just leaving it flat here. Gonna line up those notches so that I make sure I get the right amount right here because this is, you know, part of my waist seam. And it is a little easy to fudge this around and you might get that a little inaccurate and then your waistband won't fit as easily. All right, so I'm just gonna stitch along the bottom here. And I'm gonna stitch it down along the waist because I really like keeping things kind of tidy like that and on the side seam. go and there's one of my pockets I am I think I'm gonna put another line of stitching here Let's see that like that all right let's see let's line this one up from the top Sometimes I'll even stitch these two spots first if I'm not, because I, you know, I don't tend to use a lot of pins and that is um, a way to kind of cheat not to use the pins is I can just stitch this down and then it stays that way for when I go to stitch it down like that. And now I can do my pocket. Can see it. Yep. You can see it. Okay, good. This is a very typically something I would sew from the right side, the pocket, that little um, stitch line there, because, um, and I, I think it, that comes from having machines that weren't that great, you know, and the bobbin sewed not as good, and it wasn't as I wasn't as good as adjusting my machine and making sure the bobbin stitching looked as good, or maybe I didn't have the right color thread or whatever, but um, yeah. I just like doing it because I know the stitching looks better from the top. So, so if I do this other line, I can do it from the top and I can see exactly where I'm at. Cause it's really hard to see on the back because I did it in the surging stitch. <clears throat> this is a good time to point out if you have a twin needle, those machine, uh, those needles that are uh, two needles in with one shank for home machines. Um, you could use that, but only use it on a curve because you can't turn the corner, but it would give you just two absolutely dead perfect parallel rows of stitches and they would look really good so yeah right exactly right yeah that is unusual for me but um this looks really nice and clean and i think we're now to the um zipper fly so let's see me pull off a magic trick here you know i love doing magic oh i was looking for i knew i had another cone of thread I knew I had six. I always buy a minimum of six when I um, need a thread color, like in the when we did the special ones in the factory. We'd get a minimum of six because then we could have one the serger and one machine set up, but eight would be actually better because you'd have two machines. Ten would be even better. You could have all three machines plus the serger. But it thread is really expensive. Weirdly, it's just really expensive, even. Um, having a factory and you're buying all your supplies, you don't buy thread wholesale because you're not reselling it. So you're actually the end user of the thread. And so you don't get a deal. The thread at the fabric store is cheaper, but it's not as good and it wasn't the right weight. So um, we, we, and we would want like sometimes custom lots of color and they'd be like, sure, the minimum order is $400. And you're like, okay, that doesn't seem like a lot. And then you realize it's something like a full case of thread, which is like 24 rolls of spools of thread. And you're like, oh, we'll never use that. So then it just becomes kind of crazy. So, because I think 10, even 10 spools is like $40 probably. You're, you know, like, it's, it's like that kind of stuff you start looking at as, okay, that's a significant expense thread just for this one colorway, you know? All right, so here's my pieces, and I explained at the beginning um, the little boo-boo I made yesterday, and so this is what I'm using. I'm going to seam my flies to 
the center front. That is not typical, but you know what? It's okay. All right, so let's put this right sides together. I've searched both my long edges here. I'm gonna sew this into a seam. Some people don't do that. Sometimes they just surge across it like that. But I'm gonna sew it right sides together and turn it just like that. And then um, if I weren't sewing on camera, I probably would have surged this as one rather than two layers. It's just tidier, you know. Yeah, decisions and rabbit holes. Exactly. They are very real things. Um, all right, so now we have our fly facings. This is the extension, and this is the facing. <clears throat> so we're going to sew this right sides together. I put inner facing on the one that goes on the left front. So as I'm looking at this, this is the left front as I'm wearing it. So I'm going to put this, line it up at, at the waist and the center front, and we're going to sew it at the seam allowance. Mine is 5 eighths. I'm going to do this probably just under 5 eighths because of what I'm going to do after this. So I'm going to do this like definitely a full half inch. And I'm doing a regular thread uh, stitch length. This is not the basting. This is how you rescue a big old boo-boo with the fabric you had. Because you can bet if I had enough fabric, I would have just recut the fronts out and made it easier on myself. The so same with this one. Like that. Now we have our pattern piece. That's how it should have looked. Right? So I'm going to do an experiment and I'm going to top stitch this one. This one here that way. I'm pulling it pretty hard. I want it really flat. I'm just gonna top stitch this and let me show you where this is gonna be at on the fly. So you can get an idea. I think it's so helpful when you can kind of locate on what you're making, where you're at. And so what I just did was I put a stitch line right here. See, cause look how naked this looks. This doesn't look very good. Right? And I think putting a stitch line there will make it look more um, like it's supposed to be that way. <laughs> so that's what I just did right there. And for this one, we're going to put this right sides together. And I'm trying to decide. I don't want to do it on um, this one because we're going to actually top stitch this once we get it. So. If you have the seam like I do, if you don't have the seam, just line up your center fronts like this. Because this is all one piece, right? So if you're doing this the traditional way and I have a video on how to sew a zipper fly, that that's how you do it. Hey, Jan. Oh, Ray, our little duets done. <laughs> just me and Ray have been talking, Jan. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> um. So yeah, I have a zipper fly video, and I don't know why, but that playlist for me when I went and looked for it was at the very bottom of all my playlists, and it didn't even show it at the first the first time, but it's in the how-to section, and it's like a 10 minute, 10, 15 minute video, so you can kind of skip ahead and it's quick. So if your pattern pieces look like this as one piece here, you're gonna just line this up, and where that notch was that I told you to do, you're gonna put a basting stitch from there, don't back stitch, but here, all the way to the end of your fly on the seam line, back stitch, and then carry on with a regular stitch length, all right? For this one, since we, you know, did this a little bit wrong, I'm gonna try and make sure I line up this seam right on top of the other one that I've already sewn, best I can. And I like doing it like this. Maybe I'll do some pins. What a novel idea. Pins, ever so useful. You just can't go wrong with pins. All right, so I like to do this, pick this up and I'm gonna stack those seams right on top of each other. Hmm. On each side, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking too. I know that flies used to be in all these pieces because I've drafted them that way before on the instructions of the factory. 
All right, so still trying to just stack that up. Okay, that's pretty good. I just want to make sure, because I felt like that was the one thing, like it, it looks pretty good and I didn't even try and do that on this one. But you know, this edge stitching that I'm about to do after this next step, um, it's kind of on this piece, which is like this piece on this side, but it's not completely and I kind of want it to be. All right, so now basting stitch. And you're gonna start just to the left of that seam we just sewed, okay? Keep it stacked. And then when I get down to the um, same spot you, you know, that I was saying on the other one, down here to the bottom, right here, where your fly begins or ends, I should say, you're going to backstitch and change it to your regular seam um, length, stitch length, and continue on. Okay, and so um, if you had uh, the one that's all in one, you're going to clip up to where that seam is that you just back backstitched at, right there. You're gonna clip, just clip straight in. Um, I'm gonna look and see if I actually need to do it on this one. I'm pretty sure I do. <clears throat> um, and if you're like me and you pre-surged your pieces, I find clipping that is the only way I can surge around this and come down if this is all in one. But because these were separate pieces, I surged them separately it was a lot easier so there's perks to this too too so let's see i did i don't see why i need to i think i do though yeah i do actually because we're going to now top stitch it so i'm going to clip into that spot right there all right so now open it up and open this all up here like this press it open over here can be pressed to the left front as you're wearing it okay so let's and let me I'll just iron this why not right we're all in <laughs> I have a bit of a um, overflow situation with my iron <laughs> there's water everywhere that's my one pet peeve about this iron. I feel like it's even worse than it used to be is um, it's really hard to see when your tank is almost full when you're pouring the water in. Maybe it's just the lighting, but it's really hard to see and then I overflow it. All right, so we can press this open. If you were doing these shorts and like say a linen or something lighter weight, you're definitely gonna need to do this. Keep things nice and crisp here such a focal point um, there's always a lot of nerves surrounding sewing zipper flies I really love sewing them I forgot to check to make sure I got my seams that I sewed these two together all the way inside but I, I did I didn't um down here on my trial so that is one thing I learned all right I'm not going to iron too much because my surging will start showing through the texture of it. Okay, we can just iron this little seam on the rise below the notch toward this left front here. We're going to top stitch that puppy down now. How are you today, Jan? What are you working on? How about you, Ray? What are you working on? Okay, so this is all open still. See, there's my two little flies. And now we're going to edge stitch right here. This will. This is your outside of your um, your shorts or your pants, so just make sure you do a good job here. You can use a twin needle. You can put two rows if you want. I don't think I got my stitch length perfectly back where it was, but I'll keep it so I don't change. And when you get down to this spot where the rise is and that clip, make sure all that seam allowance so both of them go 
push this way to the left front as you're wearing the shorts, left front. Just like that. All right, so now we have a, can you see that? Top stitched all the way down. And I'm just gonna do one, I'm just gonna do one row because I only did one on my pocket. All right, so now we're gonna take our zipper, which I just had here, right here. And you're gonna put it face down. Now this part's kind of important. Make sure you line up the zipper tape to the bottom edge of this. Do not line up the teeth to the bottom. Um, that will have disastrous consequences later on. So you want your um, tape to line up to the bottom there. Just make sure it touches something like that, you know? That's nice. You're roasting a chicken, that sounds good. I haven't done that in a while. My husband, got he got a smoker for Father's Day. Isn't that like so cliche? Um, and uh, he smoked a whole chicken and it was the best I'd had in so long. He smoked a few other things and they're going pretty good. Like the salmon turned out pretty good. Um, the tofu he loved and me, I couldn't eat it. <laughs> I don't know why. And I was really excited about smoked tofu. But it was just, I think like he and I, he really likes, I like sweet and he likes vinegar. Like that's the difference with our taste buds, you know. And so for him, it worked out great. And um, I think there's potential there. So, hey, Eliza, how's it going? <laughs> All right, so we have our zipper down, face down. And I lined up my tape to the bottom of this fly curve. See that? And the reason we're gonna do that is because later on when we stitch down this curve onto the pants, we're gonna go right past it. So you really wanna make sure that this little brass guy is nowhere near the bottom there. You can even do it a little bit higher, just to make sure that when you're on this curve, that you are stitching down to the pant. You don't have to catch the zipper, so don't worry about that. So, <laughs> all right, so um, now you're gonna pick this up. So take your zipper and this little extension and move the short out of the way. We're not stitching it down to the short quite yet. We're only stitching it to this, right? So reposition it. And you're gonna butt the zipper tape up to the opening edge there. And it's face down, by the way, the head's on this side. So face down, and now you're gonna stitch it. If you have a zipper foot, it might be a little easier. So try and do a nice straight line. All right, and now you're gonna pick this up and just flip this little part right here back like this. Move the zipper, so now the zipper's face up. See, there's the head, and we're gonna edge stitch this right here in the the dedicated how to sew a zipper fly video it, i do it in fabric this color it's a lot easier to see so yeah do you ever have um like i love uh like marinated tofu or smoked tofu um there used to be a well there still is there was a place in humboldt i love called the tofu shop that they made it packaged it the texture was really good um because tofu can be a texture thing you know all right so there we go now we have our zipper fly right so we just edge stitched it there it is right so now you're gonna just put your shorts upside down to you and you know it kind of wants to st stand up right now here's the little extension so now we're looking at these pants upside down and inside out right this is the inside and just flop this over and lay it down. Just flop it over, lay it down flat. It'll be a little lumpier because we have those seams there. All right. And now same thing, we're gonna stitch it to this one. So pick this one up and stitch it. I'm gonna try and put two rows in there if you can. It's gonna be a little tight for me because I don't have a zipper foot on. I can't even get closer to my uh, zipper. There we go. So now it's stitched onto both. So like I said, you're gonna pick that up, flop it over, stitch it down, just like that. All right, let's see how we're doing here. Pretty good. Now we're gonna stitch our curve, all right? So this is the only time you need to sweat, 
I'm sure out of all these sewing steps for me, this is the only one that warrants sweating because you know people are gonna see this nice curve that you're gonna about to sew. And um, you can use a template. I'm just trying to show it off so far because it's so dark. Um, you can use a template if you like or chalk it on there or even just um, iron pins so you have some little pin holes to do whatever you whatever you want. I like to just follow the curve of the facing and um, through the pant. And you know what I could do is iron it right now and I would actually see that. So let's just try that and maybe it'll be more visible for you too. Oh, cool. I've never made tofu, but I know it's not hard. Like I had friends that used to make it all the time. Yeah, non-GMO soy for sure though. Yeah, I started to get a little shiny spot there, so I'll stop. Yeah, humble is too far. It is, it really is. I, it's too far for me. <laughs> I could probably have Cricket bring us home some because that's where she is this weekend. Um, we're already having her bring a Larapin sauce. <laughs> you know those people that move away from their place and they're really addicted to something that was made locally? We are those people. There were a lot of things we were really, really into. The food was just amazing there. You could pretty much grow everything but sugar, coffee, and tea there and chocolate. Those are the four things that people really, really love that they couldn't grow there. Um, it's such an amazing, diverse um, agricultural place. Um, like flour is grown there, all kinds of flowers. Um, so it's all there. And um, But Larapin sauce is the one thing that I haven't come close to finding. I'm not even a mustard fan, but it's a mustard dill sauce. And there's a place called Larapin Cafe, and they make it, and then they sell it, jar it and sell it. You can probably mail order it. We just haven't gotten that, gone that far. So... Yeah, the whole point of going there is to get us food, right? <laughs> the weather is so stellar right now. She's so lucky. Oh my gosh, I forgot to change the thingy. Sorry. The weather is so stellar there right now. I'm like, dude, you are lucking out. I mean, like, usually it's just foggy all summer. So sorry about the camera thing. Um, all right, so here we are. We're going to do this little curve here. And if you've seen me do this enough, you know I always wing it and do it on the top. But um, please use a template if you want. <laughs> so I can feel my um, facing there. It's kind of wide. Maybe I didn't really need to widen it. I was probably being a little bit overzealous. So do it the stitch it down the width that you want. So yeah, friend, are you friend busy? Yeah, no, my friends haven't really visited, so <laughs> that's not happening. But I have had, like, early on someone, like, visited and was like, figured you could probably use some Larapin, you know. It's the one thing we always bring each other. All right, so here's the bottom of my thing. I can actually feel the brass part right there. So we're going to go right around that brass bad boy. Turn. Get to the center front and back stitch. Just like that. All right, so we have our curve. And then, um, let's see how it looks. So yes, yeah, so this is a little wide, but you know, I was a little paranoid. Hopefully you waited to see how this goes. So yeah, this too, I think that this, um, this is so wide that I'm gonna line this up mostly with, let's see, how do I want this to be? I think now I can take out my stitching too. Right? take out the stitching now so um, if you didn't seam your fly facing to the center front you can probably see your basting stitch loud and clear which is which is really handy actually mine I'm gonna have to find and make sure I'm not taking out the wrong one you can even do that basting stitch in another color if you want to make sure I don't actually like taking it out like this if you see if you watch that video you'll see I do I take out each stitch. I think that's way better so you don't get any errant threads stuck in there. Because um, now I have all these little tiny... This cuts all the threads, right? My nail's about to fall off. I'm sure you guys can see that. But I'm waiting for it to grow out a little further. Moving was really hard on my hands and stuff. 
All right. I'm pretty eager to see how it looks now that I'm doing that little stitch uh, experiment there. I can't remember meaning to bring that um, little like thread grabber thingy. It looks like a ice cream cone eraser with a steam ripper on the end. You guys seen those? Definitely like a at the cash register impulse buy type of thing. Give a little tug on some of those threads that you can't get out um, and cut them and then they kind of you know get sucked back in there my canvas definitely shows a little bit of this pre-stitching canvas is strong but you know it can be leave too nice yeah you get that chicken okay so yeah, I think stitching that right there first gives it a much more polished look. So that was a good call. All right, so now let's look at my um, fly extension. Yeah, I think it can just line up with the edge of the zipper right there and that's fine. All right, so now we're back on the inside of our pants. This is the wrong side. We're gonna line this edge. I'm gonna line my fold up to the edge of the zipper tape there. But if I had made this narrower, I would probably line it up to that. Let me see, if I do that, where does it put that? Let's try our zipper out. Yeah, I think I would like it a little bit more to stick out like that. Yeah, so we'll just shift it over a little bit. We're gonna shorten the zipper later on, so don't worry about that. All right, so I'm gonna line up this fold to the zipper tape over there. And now this is a personal pref preference. I did not get the satisfying thread pull. <laughs> I love that too. Um, my personal preference with the length of this is I like this to just cover up this mess. Cause this looks like a hot mess down here no matter how good you are, unless you are that, um, you know, those denim factories that have all the great equipment, right? It doesn't look like a hot mess, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, it could look better, right? It's nice and clean. It's just, I don't know. I don't like seeing this right here. So I like to line this up to cover it up. And most of the time, this lines up with that cut right there. So that works pretty good. So I'm gonna line it up with the zipper tape and just covering that up down there. Does that like dish? Try and keep that nice and straight. And now pick this up like this, keep it together, and you're going to stitch it down. Oh, dang it. My needle came unthreaded. We're going to be done with these fronts so quickly, and maybe I'll just finish them today. How would you guys feel about that? Um, unless I can't thread my needle, then see you later. Lunchtime. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right. Okay. So now, um, I usually like this to go as far as as my um, curve stitching here. And then what I do is when I do my bar tack at that curve right here, I'm so dark, I know. When I do the bar tack at the bottom of my curve here of the fly, it catches in this fly shield, right? Just like that. So I'm gonna find a spot where I know that's gonna be possible. Here's my zipper of things, so I gotta be really careful. I'm just gonna put it like right there. And usually a bar tack is a, um, it's kind of like a, the left side of a buttonhole or, yeah, it's not the bottom of a buttonhole, by the way. A bar tack, wait, before I explain this incorrectly, there's lots of different kinds of bar tacks. Um, the bottom of a buttonhole is considered a bar tack, but it's not. 
the, a bar tack is usually a short length of zigzagging that's very dense you've all seen it on your your jeans or people's jeans you know um, and that is um, yeah that's usually what it looks like I usually fake it on my machine I'm not gonna get out my home machine just to do a little bar tack so that's just me though and I use it to secure the fly shield and I just do a bunch of back and forth and it imitates it nicely and then you can do one right here at the bottom because this is a high stress area of, of your curve where it meets the the zipper I mean the center front so I did it right here at the bottom of this curve and I did one right here um, and then sometimes you'll see it like right here as well you don't need the full length usually to get your pants on and off unless your rise is really short and then you want to be careful about shortening the opening there so as long as you can get them over your hips you're good and you can't really try it on quite yet all right so we'll just leave all that until we do the waistband and now our fronts are done so see you later bye <laughs> but um we can just keep going might as well all right so that turned out pretty good let's try it out you know that looks pretty good. My stitching is a little crooked right there for, how did I not notice that before? Is it crooked? Oh, I think it's because it's iron. That's what it is. It, it's a giving an optical illusion that's a little, it's a little crooked. That turned out pretty good for doing the seamed fly there. That, that was a good rescue. So, all right. So now we have our sides. Um, we have our back pockets. So I'm going to do the sides first on the fronts. And let's see, I think this is the um, back. Yeah, like that. And this is the back. So what I couldn't see my notches anymore when I surge. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll pull it apart a lot. There's my notch right there. While I'm surging, you can see it. But this notch wasn't deep enough that that was going to be effective. So I just put a little pin far away from where the notch is so I know that is the back seam. And I'm going to sew this right sides together. Now if you do the free range slacks uh, according to the directions, she has a really great um, flat felling method. It's not like anything new. I just mean like she she flat has you flat fell these and it is a very nice finish for these seams here. Flat felling is just so nice anyway because it um, makes your seam so flat. And I like that. I, I really like the way that is. I think I'm going to do a, a top stitch that's a little bit wide, maybe like a quarter inch away. I hope I don't regret it. I think it'll look kind of cool. I'm really pulling apart. Get it as flat as possible. Yeah, I like the way that looks actually. So I did this little about a quarter of an inch away. Hi Elizabethan, how's it going? You can't get your posting to where I'm sorry. YouTube's kind of funny. You have to be logged in to be able to comment. Um, and if you don't have, like, if you're not logged into your account, um, they won't let you comment. And um, and if you don't have an account, it makes you create one and it calls it a cha channel. And I think that kind of scares people off because they're like, I don't want to start streaming or making videos. It's just a weird name for account, you know? But yeah, if that goes for anyone. If you guys want to join us, you just need to log into YouTube. And if you miss anything, you can rewind a little bit. I hear that folks do it all the time because sometimes they'll comment on something I talked about like five minutes ago. But I'm just going to be doing a seam and top stitching this right now that you already saw it if you want to log in. <laughs> I'll wait. All right, so same thing. Do you do costuming, Elizabeth Elizabethan? Oh, I kind of, I used my smaller bobbin to get rid of it. Um, I knew I'd run out at some point. I'm glad it wasn't on the top stitching. I think the drawback with this canvas is going to be the amount of threads it collects. Get 
getting over that uh, pocket opening right there. Since I'm doing a canvas, it did push my presser foot away a little bit, so I'm gonna re-sew that and keep it straight this time. It would be easier if I came from the bottom and went over it, but yeah, this little pocket opening right here kind of pushed my needle away. Andy! Yeah, your tablet, totally. Hi, pa Patty, right? Oh my God, yeah, Patty. <laughs> How's it going, you guys? Good to see you. I'm cruising on these shorts. Ray was keeping me company and then Jan stopped by. And um, Eliza's listening to us while she drives. But um, I'm cruising on these shorts, so I'm just gonna keep going and hopefully people aren't like, wait, I couldn't tune in that day, now you're done. <laughs> This girl needs some new shorts though. All right, I'm just top stitching the side seam. <clears throat> and if you've, uh, if you're looking for a tutorial on making the free range slats, um, I have cut and sewn these live on camera, um, and they turned out great. I really love them. And um, I do the flat felling. So I can't remember what else I may have done that's not what she has in the pattern. I'm pretty sure I stuck to the pattern except for, I think I used two rows of elastic on that pair because I didn't have it. I didn't have one and a half inch. All right, so we're cruising right along. Did you guys see what I picked for my waistband? Because remember I was playing some serious fabric chicken yesterday. <laughs> I ended up picking this strike off of this fabric I was trying to design once and it didn't turn out very good um, but it's uh, my friend Laura Jean's yarn at Knitted Wit um, and it's in a twill so I figured oh this is perfect right oh cool Jan you get to go out of the house today yay I picked up a fabric order there's a new fabric uh, shop in town or online one and I saw that they had this mask panel for pre-order and um, by Ruby Star and and I just wanted to throw a little support their way so I bought some Essex yarn dyed linen from them and um, it was fun to see someone I know <laughs> and like <laughs> in real life because <laughs> it's been so long you know <laughs> all right so there's this one here and this one here so this back pocket gets sewn into, did I do the wrong one? Wait a minute. Oh, I see what I did, okay, here we go. I like the right side of my surging showing, surging showing. that's what I'm work, fiddling with. All right, so. All right, so then um, this pocket gets lined up to this side seam. It's not kind of on the sides, uh, it's on the side, but it's not your true side seam because there's this side panel. And then you're going to hem the top pocket and then turn under this these two edges and stitch it down. So I'm gonna hem my pocket first. Ooh, I almost unthreaded my needle. I'm kind of tempted to sew this and then do it that way. No. All right, what is the seam allowance on this? Does it say? Not really. I'm just gonna turn it down an inch. <laughs> Hair and makeup, what's that? I, when I was watching that how to zipper video, I was like, who is that? Why do I look like that? Why does my hair look smoother and my skin smoother? <laughs> was I wearing makeup? I may have been briefly, but it doesn't look like I'm wearing any makeup. I just don't typically wear makeup. I don't like the way it feels by a, like a lot. All right, so, um, I'm lining it up to my notches there, and I like to just pin my pockets in the middle, and always do two, at least. I say that because one can actually, you can rotate your pocket around quite a bit, 
So uh, if you put two in, that's going to be less likely, just like that. We'll do this one too. All right, there's my notch up there. And I'm also going to double check and make sure that they are the, indeed the same. So I only surged the top edge of the pocket. And then this the, the pocket has a very straight edge. And that's the set edge that goes to the side seam. And then the one that's the angle is the side that you turn under. Just for those of you kind of like, wait, which one do I surge, you know? I figured it out for you. All right, so I'm going to start by moving that out of the way. I'm going to start at the bottom down here. I'm just going to turn it under. Good thing I did chalk because my uh, I'm not lined up to my chalk very good. Look at that. Good thing I didn't do drill holes because sometimes I do. I sometimes drill the holes. <laughs> Then I don't have to worry about chalk or anything like that. So I'm going to turn under this little edge right here as well because uh, you can already see my, my canvas wants to unravel there. I hate threads poking out of my pocket. It's just kind of one of those things. And when I get to the top, I'm going to turn and go across the top. Mm, I think two stitches and then I'm going to turn and go back down to the hem back stitch. I do that to first of all secure this top edge so none of those little threads start working their way out and it's a high stress point I don't know about you but I do this and I look down there you know <laughs> when I put everything in the world in there now I'm just gonna stitch the side and so now we have a back pocket back pockets are optional too if you did this in linen you may want to skip the back pockets this rise looks so gigant gigantic to me I know it works though, so I'm just trusting. I've made three pairs of these slacks now. All right, so again, I'm gonna start down here. I find it a little easier because then you don't have to fiddle with the top quite yet. You can kind of get your sewing legs under you. some of these threads though. We don't need anything working against us, right? It doesn't look straight, that's why I'm fiddling. Why does that look so angled? It looks so angled to me. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna fold that little corner down and then it'll get kind of tucked in there when I stitch across the top. Some fabrics are a little harder to tame right there. This stayed when I folded it back, so that kind of helps, you know. We have our backs done. Now we can do um, our side seams. And let's think about this. What do I always do in the in the wrong order? And I'm always like, shoot, I should have done that first. Is it that I like to? I sh I always do my rise first, don't I? And then I'm like, oh shoot, I can't. Is it that? No, I want to top stitch my rise for sure. My inseam, I'm sorry, my inseam. I, I want to top stitch my inseam for sure. Oh, I need to do my center back rise. That's what it is. Hmm. We'll do the rise first and then we think about that. They're short, so it's not going to be a big deal if I do it in an order that makes it a little harder to do top stitching because um, they're shorts. It's not so bad, but Sometimes when you're doing pants and denim and stuff like that, doing the um, the uh, seams in a certain order is a little easier. Classically, you top stitch the inseam and not the side seams. You only top stitch down to like the end of the pocket. But um, 
you can go all the way, and I have a few, bunch of times because I, I like the flatness of it. I think when you can flatten all your seams, it can be slimming, um, it can be less ironing, and it also uh, increases the durability. All right, so I like to look at, so a good rule of thumb, I, I kind of hate that expression, is if you always push your seam the same direction as you're looking at the pants, they'll be offset when you go to sew the rise. So remember on my fronts, I pushed the seam to the left front that way. And if I do that now, they'll be going the opposite to each other when they are sewn at the rise. And that's kind of nice, that reduces both as well. Clothes making mavens, oh cute. What's it about? Is it just about someone's sewing projects or? You guys are so good about finding all that stuff. I mean, I guess that's why you're, you know, interested in watching me, huh? <laughs> Whereas I'm like looking at like um, audio books and other <clears throat> podcasts. <coughs> Uh-oh. Just a second. <clears throat> Sorry, I sometimes get a tickle that's so bad because I'm talking and it's so dry where I live, so sorry about that. <clears throat> I had to mute it. Now I'm having a cough drop. <laughs> Keep my voice, um, my throat moist. <clears throat> ah, interesting. Bye, Elizabethan. Thanks for coming. <clears throat> Inside the hem, pattern review of Muna and Broad. What's Muna and Broad? All right. We're ready now for our side scenes. And get rid of my pins that were telling me that that was the back. <clears throat> Maybe I shouldn't be be a uh, speed sewing. I would be talking so much. Oh. I've never heard of them. Who are they? <clears throat> oh, okay. 
They do women's or what? That's pretty cool. I kind of wished I would have done my pattern company idea when I stopped doing freelance. You know? Okay, so I did my side seam. I probably should have top stitched one before I um <laughs> before I did the other because it would be at least easy to do one. I'm gonna push that seam allowance towards the panel and do the same like wider top stitch. <clears throat> Full figure. Oh, amazing. No wonder they're getting some attention. I was looking at Style So Me patterns uh, yesterday. <clears throat> and then, um, who was the other one I was looking at? Style So Me and, that's Anita, right? P PhD in biomechanics. <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> that's great, but doesn't necessarily mean they know better. Speaking as someone who has worked for people who have said things like that, and I'm like, oof, okay. <clears throat> All right, I don't know if you can see how I'm doing this here. I'll bring my camera down a little bit. Huh, that's cool, I'm gonna check them out. Is that, is that their Instagram handle? There are so many indie pattern companies. Yep. Yeah, that's why I kind of like, do I really need to do that? There are so many, and there's so many good ones, you know? All right, so now you see my seams are offset from each other, the thicknesses, which is really great. No one's gonna see that your you know, top stitchings don't line up to each other, right? Because it's your the crotch of your pants. <laughs> so I like to kind of reduce that bulk by doing that. And, you know, doing your inseam as a flat fell seam is also a really good idea because of it's a high friction area um, and um, the flat felling can help that. It, it also is more comfortable I'm not doing flat felling today because this is essentially a, a very nice uh, prototype. <clears throat> but I probably would, you know, I would recommend doing flat fell and you would probably have to do that before, you have to do that before, right? So, yeah, right, Ray? Yeah. Oh, theater costuming. That's a whole nother thing. Fit in theater cost theater costuming is amazing. Like <clears throat> the things they have to like the challenges they face are so interesting because they're also dealing with um, sometimes mechanics of something that the actor or actress has to interact with or quick changes. I think that stuff's really cool and, and the budget constraints of maybe, you know, of making something that looks like it's from a certain genre, period, whatever, and um, making it look good. But yeah, it's, I've worked with some theater people in um, <clears throat> clothing and it was a hard transition for them. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna top stitch my rise, but it's not gonna be pretty to do it because it's pretty tight in there. 
And I think I'm going to do it to the, I think I'm going to do it to the front or the back. Usually you do it to the front. I think that's what I'll do. I'm going to do a wide top stitch here so that I can catch as much of the seam allowance as possible so it's nice and flat. I find serging to be kind of rough. Yeah, you would have to do the flat felt seam first. And flat felling is, is um, really fun. It, it's actually not particularly hard. If you've done French seams, flat felling is going to be even easier as long as you have the correct seam allowance and you're not doing it on something too curved. So doing it on the rise, that is probably the trickiest part about it is that there is a bit of a curve there. <clears throat> I just saw a, a guy, I can't remember what happened. He tried to flat fell a seam that didn't have enough seam allowance. I think he was just dead set on it being flat felled and that was mostly the problem because rescuing it, he was a, he was a kind of like, oh, I don't want to do those things, you know. But whatever he ended up doing, it ended up turning out really good. Yeah, right, Jan? I know. Tailoring, costuming, there's so many genres to clothing. When I, <clears throat> when I was in the... I went from the fashion industry to the outdoor industry, um, and and I was scoffed at by both for doing that, like straight up, like not even veiled. Incredul incredulity by people in the outdoor industry. Mind you, if they were trained, they were trained in fashion. If they came to the outdoor industry, or a lot of them are self-taught, which isn't always something to boast about. <laughs> so those were the same people that were like discounting what I could do. And then I had people in the fashion industry going like, why would you do that? So it was kind of a, no one knew that at the time that it was kind of a hard transition, um, but I wanted it. And um, I ended up doing so good in the outdoor industry because I brought a lot of fashion elements to clothing that just really was not fashion oriented and I am not like fashion oriented it was more that I wanted things that had a lot more versatility I didn't want to only look like I was kayaking when I was wearing my kayaking jacket I wanted it to have a three quarters life rather than a quarter life right and so I brought a lot of organic lines streamlining I was removing bells and whistles off of things constantly because I'm like, why do we need these pockets? We, no, you cannot we use all these pockets at once. You would drown, right? Or, um, and they were totally open to it. And then I, I won some awards and, um, and our line did really good. And it was a whole team that did that, you know, like we all, we all did that together. And, um, but then when I went to fitness, I got um, recruited People in the outdoor industry were like, you're going to ruin your career going into fitness um, because it was, I, in my, in like, in my opinion, the way they were putting it to me was that it was a, a step down and looked down upon to go into fitness. But I personally, well, those were the kinds of sports that I did. I was kind of into it. And so I went and worked at Hind. So, <laughs> you know. Why I used to have the owner of the company I worked for in the outdoor industry <clears throat> would sometimes talk with me because like when I would be at a show he'd be like so what do you think he's like this must be really different no one's like concerned with fashion here and um this is a very 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 shy quiet guy and I remember I was like 26 or 27 I came from the fashion industry but I'd only been in it for like five years you know I was pretty young and um, I remember saying, like, what are you talking about? Everyone's here is concerned with fashion. He's like, what do you, what do you mean? I was like, well, look, there's, there's straight up trends happening right before our eyes. Everyone's wearing their um, Teva sandals with white socks. You wouldn't see that in the fashion world. It's a terrible look. And, um, and their chambray shirt and their khaki pants. And I'm not kidding you guys. Three quarters of the men walking around were wearing that. I was like, so yeah, I'll have a uniform. Like that's your trend. And you have, and then you have this other group of people, that's their trend. And he was totally flabbergasted and upset. <laughs> it was pretty funny. 
And I wasn't that great about that kind of stuff. I was just like, that's what I just identified it right away. I'm like, oh, if I want to fit in, I need to pick which uniform I want to like look like. And I didn't. I dressed like this. I dressed in dresses and whatever. And so I got made fun of that for two, but whatever. Right? Oh, that's cool. I love the, there's an Ollie, the, the, it's called Ollie here. I don't know if that's a California thing or a nationwide thing. And it's the Osher Life Learning Institute. So if you're over a certain age, you can take classes. You can take college classes for like five bucks or something. <coughs> it's awesome. All right. So all we have left are the hems and the waistband. Yep. Yeah, Jan, exactly. So I didn't think I'd be doing all this today, but I made these in an hour and 15 minutes with a tickle in my throat and with a big old, you know, mistake at the beginning. So we're doing pretty good. I wish you guys could see them better. Here's my pocket. I'm going to hem them and then I'm going to put the waistband and we're going to be done. I don't know what I'm going to do Saturday, though. Maybe I'll take the day off. <laughs> That's the flip side. I take a day off. Which, you know, being at my new house is so nice. I just want to be there, you know. I gave myself about an inch and a quarter hem allowance. I could just have surged this, turned it up, and, and done it. But I actually like clean, finished hems. But if you want something flatter, I would just surge it and then top stitch it down. <clears throat> yeah, that's good timing. Maybe I'll um, record a video if, now that I have a whole day. I've been wanting to record some. Not if I have a tickle though. <laughs> I, it's true, I could actually use another pair of shorts. I could just make them again. then I will have been able to fit these too, you know? Because I added that little like wing in the hem, um, sometimes it's pretty easy to tell where you need to turn it. I want these. I could sit here and trim all these threads, but it's canvas and a lot of them will just come back. So I just try and get it sewn down as fast as possible. That way um, I'm just not creating more threads. You can tell the edges that were cut better on the seam, on the green line, they are not as uh, unravelly, you know? Yeah, the waistband's kind of fun. I think the lighter color will be nicer on camera too, <laughs> right? To be able to see. Hopefully I didn't uh, not think of something when I did the waistband thing, right? Get rid of that, that's surging. Some of these I wanna get rid of just cause I don't want that bulk in there. I don't want like a thread to, like feel a little thread in there, you know? It sews really nicely though. I'm telling you, putting that hem shape in. Makes your hem just sew itself. No torquing. I'm kind of 
wanting to do <clears throat> patchwork fabric for my pants number one next week. I'm just not thrilled with the fabrics I have for that. And I don't want them to look like clown pants or, or like a, I'm wearing a quilt, you know? So, yeah, I was thinking the same thing, Ray. I could do it. Pattern matching on sleeves. Wait a minute. What kind of pattern matching are you doing on sleeves? You mean like plaid pattern matching, that kind of thing? Do you have to? <laughs> when I have like a really big, big, bold pattern, I will um, look at, because the thing is, the, the thing is, <clears throat> the sleeve grain line is different than the bodice usually where it's sewing in different spots. So you gotta be kind of careful because say you wanted to match whatever's going on up here, well, your, your front and your back are coming together and you may have different, a different spot, right? It may, it may match, match like this, but whatever is happening along the side of your garment here, you're gonna just have to do your best. So sometimes I'll match the center of my sleeve to whatever it sews to right here. Other times if it's really bold, I'll just match it so that it goes across the front, but most likely it won't match across the back. So. I did get a really huge plaid. Um, I don't know if you saw that in the stories and I was thinking about making the sagebrush top um, by Friday Pattern Company, that free pattern. Is that free? That was a free pattern or was it for sale? Well, I got it either way. Okay, so <clears throat> now is time to do our waistband. And we're going to be cutting off this extra zipper. Now remember, sewists, you cannot zip up your zipper once you cut this off until it is secure because you will lose your zipper head, your zipper pull, okay? So just cut in between these teeth. Make sure you don't cut the brass like that. I'm going to cut my um, <clears throat> fly shield here, flush. Let's see here. Get it nice and flush. Yeah, I don't know if I have enough fabric to do another pair of shorts. Like, I really struggled to find a... This is the lightest color I could find without buying something, <clears throat> which I'm trying not to do. But I, I have some linen. I just feel like it's... I, I got three yards, I think, and I don't want to leave a weird amount, you know? The patchwork thing. Yeah, right, Jan? I was thinking, like, using a lot of my linen scraps. I think that'd be kind of cute. Maybe I will. I could do that Saturday. Prepare my fabric for that. Because I think that's what I would do. I would sew all the patchwork together as a fabric and then cut them out, you know? All right. So if you want to make sure that you don't go across your zipper, you know, just put a little pin at least on one side like this. Even if you do this, your zipper head should you know, not be able to get past that, like that. Just cut, just so, just pin really close to your zipper teeth. Just something, you guys. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna poke, poke it down just in case. Because you're gonna sew this all as one right here, right? All right. So let's straighten out my my um, waistband. I will not be putting belt loops on this, but I have done that in other jeans videos, only because I'm not gonna wear a belt with my shorts and um, I don't want extra, something extra there. All right, so I just kind of threw my pattern pieces willy-nilly in the in the bin, so I need to like lay, I told myself, I'm like, you don't even have to lay these out today because you're not gonna sew it. And now here I am. So where's the side with the notches? Okay, there's a notch and there's a notch, okay. Notch, notch, all right. Um, <clears throat> you know, I don't know, Ray. I would Google it. Sid 
Tiffany. Hi, are you off at one again today? How's it going? I've pretty much <laughs> sewed through the entire pair of shorts I'm putting the waistband on. So we're trying to decide what I'm going to do Saturday. Yeah, exactly, Jan. I <clears throat> many times get inspired by the Sew Over 50 posts about doing some patchwork. And other people. Other people do it, too. And I've I've done that before. I've wanted to do it again. And then I'll see someone post. And I'm like, yeah, see, I really want to do that. And then I start pulling fabrics. I, I'm not kidding. I'm not exaggerating. I've probably pulled fabric six times just late spring and early summer just to do that. And then I put it away. And I think it's just a case that I need to just sew it and it'll look fine, you know? I need to not be so clever, you know? Like, I'm trying to be too clever. Always. Okay, so there's my two. So this, the longer one is my right front. And this is my left front. <clears throat> the longer one goes over that um, fly shield, right? So then this is, as I'm looking at it, okay, like that, like that. Now, it doesn't, you know, like, I just want to make sure I get the correct one on there. But, um, you know, I, do I really need the notches? I think it'll be fine if I don't. So I'm going to do my center back seam. Yeah, I would do, I would Google, like, find out, because I'm curious too, Ray. Truthfully, it's been decades since I've tried, and I never had luck with it. And I feel like now in this world, um, you know, with ye old interwebs, um, there's a possibility someone's figured it out. You know, and then um, there's places like Seattle Fabrics, who specializes in, like, outdoor repair um, and clothing and fabrics. Um, they may have like a whole thing on there. <laughs> yeah. You can take, you can replace the zipper. I've done that. That, honestly, that's what I do. I feel like it's easier. <laughs> oh, I didn't do the interfacing. Dang it, you know. Dang it. I'm just going to sew it together and put it in there separate. I did this last time too, remember? I, I forgot to do my interfacing and I sewed it to the um, this one. I don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna sew my interfacing and lay it in there. It is, it's just cotton poplin. I'm not using a fusible. prepping my pieces. The poplin's going to be so stretchy. It's probably going to be too big. Okay. Uh, so this is the lining. So <clears throat> if, when you cut the lining of your waistband, just make sure you do it the opposite of your outer so you have one that's right side out but on the inside you know like this yep yeah see the fork <laughs> um that that's how there used to be this little thing like that looked like a fork that um you put the um zipper pull back on with or but i never could get a hold of one of those so we just forced it on i mean not in a bad way just like the fork just makes it easier it's like a two-tined little fork so sydney um 
I know you play Animal Crossing. Saw that the other day. I don't know if you play other video games, but my, my, uh, I've been eagerly waiting for this video game to come out for a few years, and um, it came out, and so much of it is set in Seattle. It's a, a post, like, pandemic, apocalyptic world, so it's kind of gloomy. <laughs> but it is pretty cool. It'd be so cool if someone from Seattle plays it and, and says, oh, I recognize all these places in here, you know? It'd be pretty cool. All right, so here's my waistband, and I don't know why I'm laying it on here like this, because I'm going to do it right sides together. So Sometimes I, when I'm talking and stuff, I just like to make sure, you know? This is my center back. That's why I keep stitching it. Animal Crossing cracks me up. Like, my, my nephew's been playing it. And um, I told my sister, I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm so... Cat. <laughs> oh, cat. She's... Look at her. She's rubbing it in that she has two kittens. Yeah, we know you have all the cuteness in the world. Thanks for reminding us. <laughs> um, have I told you, though, like, I, when Animal Crossing first came out, there were a lot of gamers I follow playing it. I don't have a Switch, so I don't, I don't play it. I have a friend online who plays it. But I, would, I started seeing them post, like, these videos of, like, little screen videos where they would get um, chased by, a, um, is it a spider? Wait, yeah, a spider, right? Or a, or a bee? The bee. Yeah, exactly, Jan. Yeah. It is kind of crazy that this kind of game kind of mimics that. Anyway, the bee, and they run around, the little music playing, they got their little net, and um, and then they lose the, they don't end up running fast enough, and they get stung, and then you see your little character with a swollen eye. I don't know why, maybe it's like some dark side of me, but those videos make me laugh out loud. There's just something so comical about it, and people were posting them um, so often. It was cracking me up. I started looking for them, and so when my sister, when my nephew got that game, He's not really allowed to play that kind of stuff very much. So when he got it, I was like, oh, my gosh, you have to send me little videos. And so so she finally got to see it. And she was like, oh, my gosh, you're right. These are so funny. Tarantula. Yeah, squirrel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I saw one person post a screen picture. And they were all, I'm deleting this game. And it was their little character. And there was this gigantic, huge, like, crab spider next to it. And they're like, I'm deleting this game. <laughs> oh, I know, right? Right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, my daughter's in Humboldt, and it got really sunny. It's sunny there. And I'm like, you are lucky. She's like, I know. See, my interfacing's too long right here, so I'm just kind of eyeballing where the end is. I'm not surprised. This poplin's going to do that, so no big deal. No big deal. Same on this side. All right, so here we go. Now we have our... waistband so yeah this this game is is pretty it's a pretty i kind of like games that are kind of emotional that way like they kind of challenge you and this one definitely this one definitely does and the second one's super controversial right now and people are being pretty terrible about it because it's incredible i already finished it and it's incredible the story is incredible the moral um, struggles in it are really good. People are flawed, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And it was really good. And the combat was really fun and hard, and some of it was really scary. <laughs> but it was really good. I loved it. But it's definitely dividing the community, which has been kind of a bummer. Big time bummer. All right, so um, if you're new here, I like to start my waistbands from the inside and work out. So, oh shoot, I'm gonna fix that right there. Let 
Yeah, I have a friend that played it, but he lives in Tacoma. <clears throat> He's also kind of young, younger, so I don't think he'd been to a lot of those places. And he was like, well, yeah, I recognize that Ferris wheel. <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, okay. Um, it's called The Last of Us. And part two just came out. It was even on NPR, you guys. <laughs> it was a big deal. It's I. It's arguably, I'm new to the whole gaming scene. I've only been doing this for a few years. But it's arguably probably one of the most anticipated games, um, especially a single player game like this that is a story. So, yeah, the new one I did already finish it. it took me 32 hours. I just chipped away at it. It took, I, I started at the lake because we didn't have internet. It was kind of frustrating. All right, so let's just eyeball this. This is looking like it's gonna be fine. So there's my notch there that goes to my panel. And then I have one that goes to the other panel right there. Perfect, this is looking good. The fa Ferris wheel is brand new. Like how, um, Oh yeah, I finished, I've played the first one a bunch of times and I just finished part two, yeah. Um, the first one came out in 2013. There is like, you can look on YouTube for movie versions where they've taken all the cutscenes and put them together and people explain it. So the voice actress is in a TV show right now. I didn't even know that. You may even watch TV, I have no idea what it is though. Yeah, Sydney. If you haven't played part one, I, I think you should play part one. Get the remastered version. It's PlayStation. Do you have a PlayStation? It's only PlayStation. All right. So we have our notches. I'll just uh, use those as my guide. So like I said, this is the inside. Oh, where's Megan? Oh. The label patrol was not here. Let's see. Gosh darn it, why do I keep unthreading my machine? Is it this thread? It might be this thread. I Maybe I'm grabbing it. <laughs> oh, 10 years, okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, right, Ray, I know. I have it, I only have two. In the end, I, I've bought it four times, but I only ended up with two copies. I have a digital copy and a physical copy. Yeah, okay, that makes more sense because it is present day right now in the game. So the, the world kind of went to, to poop a long time ago, <laughs> like 25 years ago or something, 30 years ago in their, in their world. Cool. It's such a good story. It's such a good story. It'll definitely, if you don't know anything about it, don't learn anything about it and just play it. And it's, it's, you know, it's just, it's a surprising one. I'm sure your boyfriend's heard of it. If he plays PlayStation. Okay, so here we are in my front here. I haven't clipped this corner yet and I will, but I like to make sure everything is uh, lined up perfectly before I do. And so when I get to this front here, I lay the front there. I open this up like this and I'm gonna nestle it in there. And I like to push my, um, all the seam allowances that way also put it this way actually well, let's let's try it we'll push the seam allowances I can't remember what is good and what isn't I do want to leave room to wrap this around and stitch it like that though so I'm gonna stick that out just a tiny bit stick the lining of the waistband out just past right there so that when this folds around like this it'll the seam will be centered on that edge and remember we're approaching the area with our zipper teeth and we're going to have to stitch around them. So be careful. It's really easy to forget your teeth because they're not right at the edge. They're right here. They're about, you know, an inch and a half away from the edge. And I've forgotten almost every time 
and and miraculously go through. So, yeah, it's too real. Ooh, Sydney, that would make me so happy. And if you ever want to nerd out about it, just hit me up. It's not, don't worry, it's not like our world too much. You don't have to worry about that part. I mean, you know, some people could be considered zombie-esque, but um, they're actually not zombies either, but still, um, they could be considered that in our world, but they're not, right? All right, so we have one half. You like that? I do, I do one half. I do from the center back to the... To the front and do the same thing here we'll do it from the pant side i don't think i usually ever do that do i or do i maybe i do i could probably send you my physical copy if you want sydney you can borrow it okay so i could definitely send you my first one we'll move that so that i have the zipper teeth right there. We're going to go over pretty quickly. Yeah, we, we don't even need to worry about that quite yet. Let's just start sewing. Try and maintain your seam allowance. I think this is one thing I was pretty weak at doing when I used to do waistbands <clears throat> was maintaining my seam allowance and my waistbands would kind of vary in width as they went along. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> and um... You know, I'd be so happy and proud that I got the waistband in, and then I'd be like, why does it get narrower, you know? And the other thing you have to think about is the waistband's going to meet at the at the center, and this is definitely something I talk about a lot because it has been one of my weak areas where I'll get one a little narrower, and then when it gets to the front, it's, you know, doesn't work. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit in a second because um, one of the big things you have to think about is where the seam is here's your waistband right so here's the seam because you don't want to get your even just your waist seam off and this is right now that's what we're doing so you have to make sure and it's kind of tricky because you can't zip up your zipper right now because um you don't want to lose your zipper pull off the top all right so here i am at that front again i'm going to line up this edge there Should have turned the shorts uh, inside out for this side. It'd be a little easier. Now I know I cut all that flush, so I'm gonna trust that I did that. I should probably pin this. It won't be so hard, you know. All right. At least I can see my uh, zipper teeth this time, and we're just gonna walk around. Go in between or over. Just be really careful. Don't worry that you have one extra, like one long stitch there. Just, we, we still have one more opportunity where we're gonna top stitch it down, it's gonna secure it. So now we can take out this pin that's securing our zipper there. All right, and so let's look at how it lines up right here. I should have done that actually before I started sewing. I could have, you know. So let's see. I'm looking at my seam right there to see if it's lining up. And actually, I'm kind of surprised. It, it looks really good. That's the best it's ever looked on my first try. <laughs> okay, so let's open this up now and um, the other thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to compare the width of my waistband from that seam to each other before I trim this corner like this so I'm comparing the width it's a little awkward Oh, 
That's pretty good though. See that? So now let's trim our corner. All right, now we're gonna turn it right side out. The only other thing I could think of now is if this is straight right here, the waistband with the fly edge there, because sometimes it, it wings out a little bit or goes in. But um, don't panic if it does do that. Look at the whole waistband as it's going to be buttoned and see if it smooths out any of that stuff or covers it up because it, it can since one goes underneath the other. All right, so let's pull out my corner here. Poke in my, what my all did to that just now. Pull, pull up this one. Okay, this corner. I really need to get rid of some of this stuff here. Remember, all of this is getting folded like this inside, right? Gives you perspective. I can't use my nail, which is so good for this. <laughs> This canvas can um, really pull out, so I gotta be careful. I'd rather pull on the twill than on the canvas itself. All right. So now let's turn these. Ooh, my nail snagged on the surging. I know, I promise I will deal with my nail. Maybe I should go get a band aid. Do I have one over here? I might. I do have some washi tape. some washi tape. Oh, this isn't very sticky. I got some new washi tape today. I should show it to you guys. It's really cute. Let go of me. Let me go get it. It's really cute. I got it at that new uh, qu quilt store online. It's called Moonlight uh, Quilters. Moonlightquilters.com. Pretty sure it's quilters. There's a bunch of Moonlight Quilt related businesses, but this is a fabric store. And look at, they're all sewing related. Buttons, th spools of thread. Sorry, it's a little overexposed right now. It looks way cuter in person. The threads of spool have cute detail. Um, and then these little, these vintage gals. And that's cute. And this is pretty accurate. Um, it's one eighth of an inch off by the time it gets to nine inches. You hadn't noticed my nail. Oh God, it's really bad. See, look, I tested it. That's not too bad. That would be in a good pinch. It's only an eighth of an inch off right here. Here's the nine. Here's the nine. Better than most of these that I've seen. So anyway, it's pretty cute. Okay. No, no, no. Stop that. All right. Let's finish. What is it for? Washi tape? Um, You know, washi tape is... It's a decorative thing, um, but it is kind of nice. It's um, if you need a temporary tape, you want to decorate a card or letter you're sending. Maybe you want to close an envelope um, and you don't want to use the glue or permanently close it or tape it. That'll rip it. You can because you can just re-stick it over and over. I mean, eventually it'll stop sticking. Um, <clears throat> in the quilting world, I'm quilting the knitting world. People love to use it to hold their place in their pattern. Um, it's just a fun little thing to use. My sister loves it. Scrapbookers love it. I should mention that the whole world of scrapbooking, washi, washi tape is a massive, massive, massive thing. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm going to iron this. 
Oh, I promise I won't forget my face cam this time. Well, I won't promise. So yeah, now if you if you're one of you or becomes my pen pal, you'll get some washi tape. How's that? Maybe I should just, you know, give it a good shake. This is exciting that we finished these today. Just pressing the seam up. I gotta drag this out as long as possible, right? I always center my label over the whole seam allowance rather than um, just the seam because it looks more centered that way. This is my seam though. So this is the center. <laughs> All these loose threads, man, it's kind of maddening. Canvas, though. fun. I love this yarn being in here. Thinking about my friend uh, Lorkini. I'm going to wear him now. Alright, so this is the right side of my shorts right here. Let's just look at that. So I'm going to press this edge so that I can't see ow, the lining. I can't see chat. Sorry if you guys are chatting up a storm now that I'm away. I'm going to finesse that a little bit when I'm in front of the machine because I can use my awl and sew it down as soon as I get it where I want it. This is calcium. I don't know if you can see that, but um, I live in a very mineral rich area. Uh, so there's a lot of calcium in the water. It actually ruined our first our first washing machine when we moved here. Volcanic area. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but there is a lot of volcanic rock here. I'm near, I'm kind of like, probably compared to most of you, I'm really close to Lassen, uh, which is a volcano. And um, yeah. A lot of minerals. So the reason I press that edge out first, like pushing it one way, is I want to make sure that I get this as like is um, pressed out as far as possible, so that I don't accidentally like make the inside like this and stitch it down. Then I have all the slack, right? Or the outside, you know, either way. So I try and get it as you know 
pressed open as possible, even though it's kind of hard to press it open since it's a waistband. I should have pinned some of this. Oh, my elastic. I can't forget the elastic. Oh, my gosh. Don't let me forget the elastic, you guys. <laughs> These won't fit if I don't put the elastic in. <laughs> oh, man. I just, like, it went into autopilot mode with a waistband. But we're putting elastic in the back. For that little notch, which I don't see there. Almost ready. I have to get rid of that. There we go. Has anyone seen a, is if Andrea's been streaming? I haven't seen her stream in a bit. She made some really cool uh, anti-racism shirts. They turned out really nice. Maybe that's keeping her busy. <clears throat> All right, and when I get to these areas, I like to pull it open like this and then wrap it around. See, like, still, I left myself a little space for that, and it could have been even more. Make sure all this is flat when you're doing it. Sorry, I can't see chat. <laughs> trying to go fast. Lovely. Okay. I'm using a um, canvas. Like, I think a 10 ounce canvas, organic cotton that I had from my old um, business. <laughs> I used to make up sun and journal people, exactly. Ah, thanks for explaining that, Ray. <laughs> yeah, it's just a 10 ounce canvas. It was the lightest one I had, and I have just been getting so low on fabrics, you know? Okay, so um, this is how I'm gonna figure out my elastic width. Like, okay, so I could just maybe go, you know, well, no, I can't, I'm not gonna say that, but, um. So I'm gonna put elastic across the back. Now, the canvas is pretty hard to wanna to gather, right? Hey, Barbara. I know, I, I wasn't planning on finishing them today, but they're gonna be finished. I'm on my very last step. So I do have two, I do have some one and a half inch wide elastic, thankfully. This is what I'm thinking. I'm gonna lay down these pants they don't have to be elastic pants that you hold up to yours, but since these are the same pattern, I'm going to. And that way I can see how much I need these to cinch in, right? Um, the uh, pattern calls for a piece, I think two inches smaller than your waist, right? 
So if I want these to sit like this, I want my elastic to be about this um, wide. So I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller so that it actually um, draws it in because the canvas is gonna fight it. Hi, Ramona. Ramona, I saw you got the mask pattern and it looks like you you, you didn't buy it because it's free, but a few times. Were you having trouble finding the download? Hopefully you found it. I thought maybe you were like, where is it? And you kept purchasing it. Like purchasing it. I can see zero dollar sales now. <laughs> so that's um, that's what I was thinking was happening. It's only Thursday. <laughs> yeah, it's Thursday, Ray. <laughs> So I want to pull that in. Hey, say, thanks for subscribing, Simon. Welcome, welcome. I can't tell if you're just subscribing on Twitch. Hopefully it's YouTube. I do get some Twitch subscribes on, and um, I haven't been able to stream on Twitch lately. Since since the new year, it stopped working. You wanted it, it wasn't downloading. Okay, so um, look on your computer for a file named Downloads, and it might be in there. Um, it'll also show up at the bottom of the screen on some types of computers and it's subtle like it'll show up right at the bottom above your search bar at the bottom of your task bar I mean so but if you have a downloads folder it should be in there and it'll be on the receipt on the screen of the website that receipt and then you'll get an email so <laughs> I'm gonna try this piece of elastic here it's a little smaller than what I want which I think would be good I don't like that it's unraveling, but I also kind of wish it was braided and it's very, I haven't not been able to find um, braided elastic in this width. Oh, this isn't, this is one and, oh, this is only one and a quarter. All right, so we'll use um, this stuff. This stuff's pretty soft. So it also gives me a little bit of concerns. Now, if I get it wrong, the worst I have to do is pop open that waistband and just, you know, like right at the, where I'm gonna stitch it down, probably about right here, and it will, um, and then shorten it, you know? So, oh wow, Ramona, that's quick. Oh, maybe Ray, yeah, yeah, that's what she meant, that Andrea, I thought so too, but I haven't been getting notifications for it. <laughs> nice. So I'm going to also just pin it on here like this. And we're going to see if it does what I want it to do. Right. This is kind of the... I should put it inside. We'll see if this works, just putting it on the outside. I'm just going to see how much it brings it in that would be basically let's actually put it inside and see if it uh, how it does with the canvas so you might need to play around with this for your width but I would probably um, hold it up to some pants of yours I'm making it go a long way. You don't have to do the elastic all the way to that front seam right here. You could even do it, because remember there's a, a side panel with the free range. And um, you could do the elastic to the middle. You could do it to the back. You can just do a little bit of elastic, right? I may do that just because uh, asking it to do all this canvas seems like a bit much. I don't even know if it can do it. Let's see if it'll stretch this far. Oh, it will stretch this far. Okay, cool. I'm gonna stick, st uh, stick it here too. Let's see if I can get it. I really like braided elastic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did they, Barbara? That's awesome. That might work.
You don't want elastic too tight because then it'll go up your butt, to put it bluntly. <laughs> I think that'll be, I think that'll work. Let's see. Quotes by Ceramy. <laughs> Maybe that's a little too small. Um, I'm, what I'm thinking though is it's going to stretch it out a little bit because of the uh, canvas. I will admit, like putting the elastic in a canvas waistband isn't the sexiest application for an elastic waist back. Um, in fact, my favorite would be probably to do it the way these were originally sewn without a waistband. Um, you could do, I bet you could even do these with elastic only in the back and no zipper fly. But I wanted a zipper fly. I want that look of a short that looks like short, like a, like a full on regular pair of shorts on the front with the elastic in the back, you know? So that's just me. All right, so I'm gonna um, stitch down. I'm gonna re-thread my needle for the fifth time. No joke. Maybe this thread is lighter weight. I'm gonna stitch my elastic down at that seam, and I'm going to do it on the um, waistband lining. And I'm going to stitch it down real good. And I'm going to seat it up at the top of the waistband seam, not at the bottom, because you really don't want to accidentally catch it when we go to stitch in our waistband. Oh, I just got that caught, so I didn't get to stitch it really good. Now I'm going to. Like, no joke, put two rows in because remember the pressure of your elastic pulling and eventually it could unravel depending on what kind of elastic you're using um, and then your stitching will just kind of be gone. So. <laughs> All right. I feel like I may need to adjust this later, but we'll see. We will see. And now we can basically stitch our um, uh, waistband. I do feel like that's going to be going a lot. I don't see at least this waistband or this elastic doesn't curl when it's stretched really far. Um, and it probably won't even uh, turn either because it's secured at the sides. And if it does look like it can turn at all, which it won't because it's not in a continuous loop. If you are doing elastics in a continuous loop and it turns inside the casing, stitch it down to the center front, center back and the sides. Yeah, right? Softer elastic sometimes, it's just not strong enough. Yeah. Yeah, so I think like um, you could, it's kind of an interesting idea to, um, I'm going to top stitch my waistband. I, I want to edge stitch my waistband, but I have to be really careful. I get really close to the edge. I'm going to start the center back, by the way. It's going to look like a hot mess while I'm doing this, just to warn you. <laughs> yeah, I think you can leave the um, amount I cut off of the pants and turn the waistband over. What I like about that is that, oh, it's not how it's done though, it's a waistband facing. Let me think about this, how I wanna say this. See, for me, on a waistband, um, every time they, uh, like, uh, when I do a waistband with elastic, and I think this is how the pants number one is sewn, is, um, it's a fold over waist, not a separate waistband. And I'm, ex I'm excited because I'm gonna show you guys how I serge elastic onto a waistband. I've never shown you how I do that, I think. And um, I that's my absolute favorite way to put elastic on a waist because it can't turn and it's nice and flat. It's the what we all like wearing, you know? So 
we'll go do that on the pants number one. Yeah, it's good. The lighter weight is good for stuff like that, like skin on skin, uh, the leg holes of underwear, that lighter weight, soft stuff. I don't like start stops at my center front waist. That's why I start at the center back. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go over those teeth again. This is the only worst bad part is that I have to put it through the under my head of my machine. So walk your machine past or between. move out of my way here. Wait, let me get these pins. Why I have three pins sitting here, I have no idea. I don't like pins on my, my thing though. <laughs> yeah, the surge thing is is uh, a little bit scary to do. But um, the result is so nice. It's really worth figuring it out. All right, so now I'm getting to my elastic casing. And I'm just gonna try not to catch that elastic in there. I'm just gonna push it in there. Hopefully I've left enough room. Might be a little close since I wanted to top stitch my top of my elastic waist, or my waistband. And I am stretching it so far too. Is it going under the fold or the seam there? Oh yeah, okay. Is that what it wants to do? Oh, it does, okay. It does indeed. This is just fussy no matter what. Camera will be in my way, but that's okay. Can see a little better. Turn up the brightness on your device so you can see. Going just to the right of my elastic, and then soon I'm gonna start pulling it so that it um, is on the other side. This is particularly a, a better, like sewing my last seam on the right side of the garment is makes this particularly a better way to do it because um, you don't have to worry about what the inside <laughs> or the outside looks like, right? You can just do it from the outside and you're like, okay, I don't care what the inside looks like, right? So now it might start gathering up my seams a little bit off in the center back. And I think it was just like that to begin with. I don't want to get any torquing either. You could pin this too, you know? <laughs> I love showing you the hardest way to do things. <laughs> it's actually not hard. Too bad. It's not too bad. But see, now it's going to start pulling. That's okay. So make sure you start, stop needle down when you're doing this kind of thing so that you're not pulling on your needle. Never pull on your needle um, when you're sewing because you don't want to get a bent needle. That's pretty dangerous. Once you get past this part, it'll get a lot easier. We could do video on just how to do this kind of thing a few different ways, you know? It looks twisted and I know it's not, so stop looking like that. There we go, all right. Now I can just hold it, stitch it down. Now I'm gonna be approaching the center front again, so we have to go around our zipper teeth. 
hopefully this is still lining up good so we don't have any extra fabric because we don't want it to go off the edge of the front. I'm going to use my awl to push this in there and make sure it doesn't push off the edge here because it is it got a little bit longer about an eighth of an inch longer and um, that can be a little tricky to get in there you know so I just use the awl tame it oh wait I'm about to go over my your, you can't see your zipper teeth right now so be really careful here Canvas is really thick there. You can grade some of those seams to maybe lessen the bulk, but I think your needle's gonna still have to go through them. All right, now we're just edge stitching. Um, and you don't wanna be getting your elastic in there, but it is a lot harder to tell if you have. So um, stretch your elastic out so that if you do, at least it's stretched when you're sewing it. See, the canvas is pretty thick for this and for how far I went. Let's evenly distribute these. It's very thick right here. See, it's not really wanting to gather right here because of that um, center seam. This looks pretty good. Yeah, that's stretched pretty far. That's a good experiment though. I feel like that's pretty good for our first one. Um, and uh, I think maybe I would explore only doing the front as a waistband and then the back as a continuous piece that folds over. And then I would probably um, sew that so that you would assemble the back as one complete thing the front as one complete thing and then I would fold over the waistband when I got to the side seam and fold it over. That'd be a way to do it. Now I have some flat front shorts. So dark. Oh man, that hurt. My stitching is pretty far down there. I'm surprised. Could have done a little better there, huh? Cool. Looks pretty good though. I can't try these on the Beatrice, sadly, because it's on a pant form. The Pietras are reversed. What do you mean? Like the elastic's in the front and it's a flat back? I think ideally what you would do is only put the elastic like maybe between the um, seams right here of the um, side panel. I would probably just do it there and that's it. You, it would still have to stretch a bit, but you have to remember, we didn't remove any of the fabric on the front. Um, and um, so, which there isn't much extra. Like these are pretty flat pants in, to begin with, like when they're on you, you don't really have to gather up too much like these. These aren't really gathered that much. See, like I can barely even stretch it. I think it stretches maybe It stretches like three and a half inches. That's it. You know? Maybe I'll be able to loosen some of this. And what I can do, if I need to adjust it, is I'll just pop out the seam right here 
unstitch it from the side and then I can adjust it. What wouldn't, what be too much uh, stretch like this or um, the way you were starting the string so it has a waistband only where the elastic is, I guess. Oh, interesting. Well, that's interesting, Sydney. Yeah, that's one, another way you could do it. If you're doing it in a light, a weight, lighter weight fabric, this would come out so much nicer. Like if these were linen, think about how nice that would look. Not this um, canvas, you know. And I, I can feel, I think the elastic is a little bit folded right here. I can't tell. It might be the seam allowance I'm feeling. Oh, that's the seam allowance I'm feeling. But it adds some bulk, you know. The other thing you can do is um, maybe two rows of a narrower width elastic that's braided and then put that across. Yeah. I'm excited to try these on. Oh, um, I, I think it would be about the same, Ramona. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like say if I only did here. Yeah. So, yeah. You could even do it just on the sides, you know. And, and then what you could also do, too. Remember, because we've added the zipper fly, we now have an opening into these pants. You could take out some of these gathers. Like, you could take out some of the fullness of the, the shorts. And then you wouldn't even need to gather that much then. It would just be like a comfort thing. Yeah, right, Barbara? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm thinking, too, just on the side seam. Like, little, just a little section here. Full on, you know, mom jeans. You could put it just here, you know. But um, because you have the opening, you're going to be able to get these on and off no problem. The elastic isn't what you're... You're not using the elastic to get these on and off where you are with the the free ranges, right? The, the pants. So if you don't need them to need the elastic to get the pants on and off to be able to stretch enough to go over your hips, you can decrease the amount of fullness. But if you want the pants to stay a little bit, a little bit loose, um, and you want some, you know, room to eat a big meal. So yeah. So well, cool. Well, I definitely, if I sew Saturday, it'll be definitely something not so dark. Yeah, not mom jeans, comfortable ones, exactly. Hey, moms like to be comfortable. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Barbara. Yeah. I had some really great corduroy pants then. Yellow ones and pink, yellow one, yellow pair and an orange pair. <laughs> And I was wearing with pink shirt. You guys have heard that story though. So my mom would be like, those do not go together. And I'm like, yes, they do. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna try these on. I'm excited. And I just need a button and a buttonhole. You could even put rivets. Without darts or yoke, need the elastic. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's no uh, yoke. So yeah, if you don't have any darts, but even just a little bit. I didn't make these so that I could tuck a shirt in. You know what I'm saying? I made these so I can have comfortable shorts and they still look, you know, nice from the front. <laughs> cool. All right, well, I'll let you guys know what I'm doing Saturday. Sorry I finished these. I'm not sorry, but you know, um, for those folks that can't come until Saturday and uh, wanted to see this and be able to ask questions, um, yeah, ask away on Saturday and I'll tell you what I can. Um, and then maybe we'll do some, pa the patchwork so I can make some fabric for the pants number one. Cause I think that would be kind of fun to do. We'll just do a relaxing hang out and sew together on Saturday. You guys want to do that? Hang out and sew together. Maybe I'll just start whenever I want. <laughs> no rules. Cool. All right. Let me brighten this up so you can see one last look of them with um, where you can actually see it. I'll brighten it up quite a bit. Oof. Watch your eyeballs. You can kind of see. See, 
See this? Maybe I would not put a seam there so that the elastic didn't get flat. And I think um, if I like this, I might even stitch down the middle. To I, could, I don't like elastic looking like this. I don't like it looking ruffly. I really like it when it's flat. You know what I mean? Anything Saturday. Anything goes Saturday. Could I do, um, I don't know if I have fabric, Ramona. I'm, I'm getting so low on fabric. But maybe, because I could really use another pair of shorts. What if I put the contrast up? Oof. I mean, I know my arms are hairy, but you don't really need to see that. <laughs> cool. I'll definitely be doing a, a surged elastic on the pants number one next week, Ramona. And it's a full waist. Um, so not the way you sew the free range. I'll probably surge the elastic on and then top stitch it down. I have to warn you, that goes really fast. <laughs> doing it in a casing takes so much longer. That's why I think it's also worth doing it. It's a nicer, it's a nicer waistband. It is surging and sometimes surging looks kind of budget for some folks. Um, but uh, surging it on and top stitching it down is the flattest waistband. The gathers are perfectly distributed. Um, so, you know, it, it has a lot of benefits and it's faster. It's just a little nerve wracking putting your, stretching your elastic as you go through the serger. Yes, exactly, Ray. Yeah, can you imagine these in linen? How nice they would, much nicer they would be. Yeah, so I think for canvas, I wouldn't have been so ambitious to do the entire back. But we learn every time we do this, right? We don't get to sew 15 of them to get it right. What is that? What's sitting around here? I have some chalk right here, I know. Maybe it was the tape. I don't know. Yeah, right? I make these uh, an inch and a half shorter than the they how they come. Just so you know, Penny. They're pretty long otherwise, and I, I feel like that that this is a good amount because I don't like it when I sit down and stuff some pockets and it bends there. Yeah, Ray, I, I do think like it depends on what elastic. That's why I like the braided as well. And it has to go on the correct fabric, right? It, I couldn't, I could do it on the canvas. It still would be a little bit strained. And this is our, this is like, this is definitely not ideal, right? This is, not, this is the strained version. But look at this. Like if this had been surged and top stitched, it would be a really nice. These probably look kind of ratty to you guys, but I just love them. They're just so broken in. The chambray is aging really nicely. I really love that kind of weathering. But look at how many times I had to stitch. Oh, not that one. Is this the pair? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And look how many times I've stitched through this elastic to keep it flat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I stitched through this um, seven times to keep this elastic flat. And I didn't know that until probably after I wore them a few times. But this is the fabric also that, see, it does this. And that's the pocket. So. But I don't even iron these. I just wear them like this. They're really comfy. Yeah, exactly, Ray. I think it's just experience. So. All right, well, um, and, you know, even experience will get you here, so. <laughs> but you remember, when this is on me and it's kind of stretched out, it'll probably not be so bulky looking. I just don't like the canvas, you know. There's um, also methods of putting a knit, you like, you could not do canvas as the waistband at all on these. You do, you know, knit fabric. Something really soft and thin. And then as long as it doesn't show, it's fine. So, or draw cord. What if you only did um, this elastic 
uh, 50% longer so that's not stretching as much and then you put a draw cord attached at the sides that comes out like right here that'd be really cute you know you could put a little, hole, little buttonhole right here draw cord coming out um, and I think then you could do the kind of split the difference <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right you guys well cool you'll most likely see me saturday if not just forgive me it's summer and i want to spend time at my new house um you'll see me next week and then um so i'll see what well, i'll probably do the patchwork thing sorry ramona i know you probably want a surged fabric waistband version of this but I'll, I'll definitely do the surged elastic waist on the pants number one next week. So, and I'll be sewing those next Saturday. I'm cutting them on Wednesday. So, all right, guys. Well, I will see you on um, Saturday, most likely. Yeah, you could do draw cord. You could just attach it here and it come out right here. Yeah. And then you don't, you, you can make it so that it's not, um, the elastic isn't fixed there stitched to the pant and it'll pull but you don't need to do that the uh caroline pajama bottoms the first pair i ever sewed on camera those have that all right thanks ramona yeah cool thanks guys yeah well barbara because i was supposed to stream on saturday the second part of these shorts and i finished them today um, I've been thinking about doing, sewing a bunch of fabric together, like from scraps to make some fabric for my pants number one next week. And I keep like getting part way and going, oh, I don't really like this combination, but I kind of want to push myself. So I was thinking maybe if I stream Saturday, I would just hang out with you guys and make my fabric for my pants next week. I don't want them to look like a quilt. And I, I have a lot of scraps that are very similar, you know, like in these blues that are linen and stuff like that, but they're not all the same blue. And I don't know how that'll go over. I don't know. And like, I'm kind of tempted to buy this fat quarter pack from Moonlight Quilters of Essex Linen. They have two packs and the colors are really nice. And I almost got them yesterday. I was like, ooh, two um, fat quarter packs would get me a pair of pants number one and I could um, patch that together. But I want to use my scraps. <laughs> yeah, right, Ramona? That would be great. What was the um, what was the term Walter told us about that week in May that we had the finishing it on? What was it? What was his term? He had a term for that. For you finishing your UFOs. I can't remember what he said. I'd have to look back at the video and see what it was called or maybe what I said, what, cause I said what he said, but yeah, I love that. I'm, I did all that that week and now I have another pile. Like, yeah, I have a little pile. <laughs> so yeah, right. Exactly. Ray. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking too. It'll be relaxing, you know? So Cool. All right. Well, so cool. I'll probably see you Saturday then. Yeah. Be bold. Yeah. All right. Well, have a great rest of your week. I'll see you Saturday. 11 a.m. Pacific. Thanks for coming, everyone. FFO. Yeah. Finally finished objects. That's it. Yeah. Finally finished objects. Exactly. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, I'll see you guys then. And, um, um, have a really great rest of your week and happy sewing. So bye guys.